Now, we're at church. I was expecting at least some clapping in the middle of that beat or something. <laughs> some clapping. Hey, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come in swinging real quick, okay? I'm going to come in swinging right in the beginning here. Just so as I was in prayer over there, God gave me a word for I don't know how many people in this room. But God put it on my heart that someone or some people are afraid to be in the word of God. Because you know it's going to hurt. And that's actually not fear from God. That's fear from the devil. Because he knows that if you get in the word, his schemes are exposed. And I want to encourage you today because we're about to drop a bunch of scripture on you to receive it, to let the Holy Spirit work in your heart today. And do not be afraid of God's truth because it is love. And his love tells us the truth so that we don't perish, but we would have everlasting life. And I just want to encourage you with that. The devil's been trying to make you feel, uh, you know, if I do that, I'm going to, I'm going to, it's going to hurt. And I don't want to because I know what it says. That is the enemy. That is not God. God strikes us to the heart because he loves us and he rebuilds us and fixes us with his truth. All right. So I don't know if that's you, but let me pray real quick. God, move through your word today. We expose that lie of fear in Jesus' name, and we crush that lie and that fear with the word of God today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're recapping real quick here. Spiritual warfare is when the kingdom of darkness comes against the kingdom of God. Whether it's God's plans, purposes, or people, simply being a child of God Simply sharing the love of Jesus puts a target on your back. And the battle for our souls and eternity has already been won. Now we just persevere and fight. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you are already under the blood and the protection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, if you do not have Jesus Christ, you need him. Because his blood purchases our freedom from sin and death. It breaks the bond, the bondage of sin and death on us. You need Jesus. So today during this sermon, call out to him. Give him your life because you are powerless without him. You are powerless without him. Let's turn to Ephesians 6, verse 10. I'm going to break down the armor today as much as I possibly can. Um, and I have to say, I've, been, I've done study on this over the years, and I've been digging in again this week, obviously, to prepare. And I just want to cut through all the like, illustrations of the armor and just get right to the spiritual gifts that God has given us through his armor. And um, I, I love the whole illustrations. I love all the books that talk about the sandals and what they mean to the Romans and all. I, I think that stuff is all great, but I, I don't have time to get into all that. That would be a series in itself for every single one. And as I read a lot of different commentaries and Bible study tools, you know what I realized? It actually can confuse you. It can confuse you if you don't just use the word of God and look at what scripture says. God has given us six things to help us combat against the enemy and then one more, which is prayer, uh, on top of all the armor. And so we're gonna look at Ephesians 6, starting with verse 10. I'm gonna teach as as I read the word and receive today. Receive the word. A final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor. Does it say your armor or God's armor? God's armor. Nothing that we made, nothing that we can fabricate or or put together for our protection. God's armor bestowed upon us. So that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Listen, church, we are fighting against spiritual powers, so we need spiritual armor and weapons. And I want to say something else that was pressed on my heart as well. 
you will lose the battle if you use human philosophy against the devil. The word of God is powerful. The gospel is powerful. If we're using human teachings and thought and philosophy, it is powerless. You must, and that's why I do believe as well, that the enemy doesn't want you to be in the word of God because it is powerful. And he's trying to make you afraid of what God's going to say. I would be afraid of not hearing God. And I would be afraid of using something that's not of God. Okay? Human philosophy is confusing. The word of God is clear and to the point. So we need spiritual armor and weapons to fight the enemy. And this is what Paul says. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. So first we had strategies. Now we have resisting because of temptation and his deception. So we're looking out for two things, his strategies and schemes, and now his, his temptation and his deception so we can resist it. We need the armor. And then after the battle, because you're going to face battles, you will be standing firm. Stand your ground. Putting on the belt of truth. By the way, stand your ground It's saying, be courageous, be powerful. And by the way, you're standing in whose power? God's power. We cannot go into this life. We cannot start our day or go to bed on our own power. We need to live every day submitted under the blood, the authority, and the word of God. Because this is not a playground here on earth. It is a battleground. That's the reason why we're doing this series, is to wake us up to that. So put on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all, to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I want to answer two questions today. What in the world is the armor of God? <laughs> Because there's so many different teachings on it. And then, and I don't, I don't, I'm not going to pretend like I have it, you know, nailed down perfectly. And then secondly, how do you actually put on spiritual armor? Because it's just, what's, what's the practicality of that? I think that's really important we understand that. So what is the armor of God? In a nutshell, the armor of God is gifts and power from God. It's gifts and power of God. And I'm going to rush to my later point, but it's okay. I'm going to say it again. The, the armor of God is actually Jesus. The Bible says to clothe yourselves in Jesus Christ, to put on the new nature who is Jesus Christ, to put off the old self. So we are putting on Jesus, and the armor is all that God has for us to stand against the enemy. And it's all truth. It's his words. So I'm going to get into it. Here, here's the first one, truth. We know that God is truth. We know that his word is truth. And that's important because we also know that the devil is the father of lies. John 8, 44 says, you belong to your father. Jesus is talking to some Jews that are against him right now. And he says, you belong to your father, the devil. Wow, that was bold. And you want to carry out your father's desires. He was, he was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. Listen, church, let me stop right there. Jesus is aware that they're trying to kill him. And he says, your father's desires, the devil, that's what he likes to do too. Jesus just exposed their motives of trying to kill him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Wow. Yet because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I am telling the truth, why, do you be, why don't you believe me? Whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. If we have faith in Christ, we would understand what Jesus is saying. If I know the truth, no matter what attack the enemy throws at me, no matter how many times he tries to dismantle my theology or doctrine or understanding of the word of God, if I know the truth, every attack is going to fail. And so I need to be in the word of God. 
so much because he comes at you at every side, the enemy does. And I love what Charles Spurgeon said, a Bible that's falling apart usually belongs to someone who isn't. <laughs> Amen. So everyone that bought a brand new Bible, you're gonna go out in the concrete real quick. <laughs> Start rubbing it on the ground. I don't do this for any reason, but this thing is getting worn. My daughter, my daughter and my son go, you need a new Bible. I was like, no, I don't. <laughs> it's all good. But let me tell you something. We need to wear this Bible out because we won't fall apart every time the enemy throws a lie at us. So in the armor of God, the armor of God, we have truth. So we put on truth. We live in truth. We live in Jesus Christ. The second thing is righteousness, the breastplate of righteousness. Now, I love how Paul uses like an analogy to help us remember these words, but we can get caught up in like why the breastplate was on the body during that time. The point is righteousness. God gave us righteousness in Jesus Christ. And Satan will attack us with lies that we are not saved, accusations that we are not worthy, that we are unloved, and so on. But the reality is we didn't achieve this righteousness by our own works. Jesus did it. And we simply believe and receive. I'm going to cut through some of the scripture real quick. Go to Titus 3, 3 through 7. It says, at one time we were too foolish, disobedient and deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. This is how bad they used to be. But when the kindness and love of God, our Savior, appeared, who is Jesus, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and the renewal by the Holy Spirit, so that born again, by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, not by our works, not by following the law, not by following a bunch of rules, but because of what Jesus did and we believe it and we receive it, we are saved, we are righteous in God's eyes. So therefore, it's not your good deeds that makes you righteous. And the enemy's going to be like, hey, you've done a lot of bad stuff. You're not righteous. And you can be like, well, actually, Jesus did it all for me. I'm good. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Jesus did it for me. I'm good. Now, does that mean, like I said last week, that we can just trample on grace and live however we want? No. We don't, right? We got to continue to follow Jesus and live that holy life. Charles Spurgeon, he, 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 he fought some wars. He said this, Satan tells me that I am unworthy, but I, I always was unworthy. And yet you, he's talking to God, have long loved me. And therefore, my unworthiness cannot be a barrier to having fellowship with you now. Because God loves us. God fully was aware that we're unworthy, and that's why he gave us his son to pay that there was no way, there was no, no acts or deeds that you could do to be forgiven or saved. It had to be Jesus. It had to be Jesus. So when Satan makes you the topic of those lies, you gotta tell him, you gotta look at Jesus, my friend. Well, he's not your friend, is he? <laughs> he's not your friend, my enemy. <laughs> you gotta look at Jesus because it's not me. It's what Jesus did for me, and I receive what he did for me gladly. Philippians 3, 9, Paul said this, I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. Romans 3, 23, for everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, with undeserved kindness, declares that we are righteous. In Romans 8, 1, so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Romans 8, 31 through 34, because of his love for us, we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors for those who love him and his love for us. So in the armor of God, we have truth. We have righteousness to fight against the enemy's lies, and we also have peace the shoes, the readiness 
to be ready to go and share the gospel, and you're ready to go share the gospel because you have peace with God in the first place. You are no longer an enemy with God. You have been made righteous in his sight. You are not against God. You are with God. If God is for us, who can be against us? And so because we have peace with God, we are ready to go and share this good news with everyone around us. But there's also another element to this, that we also need to be peacekeepers and peacemakers. That if we live in peace with God, shouldn't that be what flows out of us? And so that's what scripture says in James 3.18, and those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. The enemy doesn't want you to be at peace with God because you won't share the peace of God. And if you don't share the peace of God, righteousness will not explode in our community. If peace spreads through our community, if unity spreads in our community, righteousness will prevail. Well, guess who doesn't like that? But you need to understand something. God has given you peace so you can live at peace. And at peace with one another, peace with him. And so therefore, you're going to sow some amazing fruit of righteousness. I'm at peace with where I stand. I stand on the truth of God's word. I'm forgiven. I am loved. I am immovable. The devil may try to disrupt our peace, but we're not afraid because God loves us. The next piece is the shield of faith. The shield of faith. The faith mentioned here is not saving faith. Faith mentioned here is your ongoing trust in God's promises and power and protection. The truth. The devil is going to shoot fiery arrows at you. A bunch of lies, a bunch of doubts, some weird thoughts, some hateful thoughts about others, burning desires for sins. He's going to shoot those things at you. It's, by the way, it's, it's, in reality, it's hard to see an arrow coming at you, isn't it? It's tiny. I mean, I've never been shot at by an arrow, but <laughs> it's not a cannonball. It's, it's not a large object. It's small and it's precise. And he will come at you like that. But my faith is in God's word. My faith is in his promises, his presence, and his plans. I don't need to see the future to see clearly because I know who holds the future. I'm not afraid to die because I know where I'll be. I think that's a big fear. I have no doubt that God loves me. I have no doubt where my eternity is. I trust completely in the durability of my shield, the faithfulness of God. See, God is faithful so my faith can grow and be even stronger. And so we have to walk by faith. We have to not live by the things that we see, but live by faith. And we remember that. Then we go on to salvation. So he's given us, he's given us truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and then the helmet of salvation. This is interesting because the mind is a battlefield, isn't it? Our minds need to be ready for battle. We need to know that we are saved by Jesus Christ. Remember what you are saved from. That's a good memory to have. Remain humble and grateful and submit under the covering of Jesus Christ. Salvation. Revelation 12, 11 says, they triumphed over him in this vision. This was the devil, triumph overing the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. We have overcome sin and death by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are under the blood, under the blood. We have the salvation of Jesus Christ to remind us we don't have to be insecure in, fight, in the fight. The mind is important to protect. 
It's many, many times the attacks are here. Thoughts, all those things. We need to have the mind of Christ, the word says. And to be filled with the mind of Christ, we need to be in his word. It's interesting how all the armor in real life does connect to one another and work together. Every single one of these actually complement each other. That we need the word of God, righteousness, peace, faith. Everything needs to be on to be powerful, including the fact that we are saved, not by our works, but by his. So they all connect So when the devil comes at you and says, you're not saved, God doesn't love you, you can tell him, well, that's not what my word says. I see differently in scripture. And lastly, the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. In Hebrews 4, 12, it says that the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, piercing to the heart and marrow of man. This entire sermon so far, I've been sharing scripture to cut down lies of the enemy with the sword of the spirit. And even earlier, as I said, when I came out swinging, I was swinging with the word of God and a a message from God for someone or many in here to not be afraid of the honesty of God's word. Now listen, I'm going to say something that I really wanted to say for next week, but I'm going to say it. Satan doesn't like honesty. I'm going to get into it. Next week, you need to be here, okay? Like every week, you should be here. (laughs) Please, please be here as much as you possibly can because I'm going to break down the weapons that we fight with, and honesty is one of them. And God uses honesty and truth to help us fight even though it's very hard sometimes but it's a weapon that the enemy cannot combat against he can't stand it because he's not big on honesty is he let the word of God correct you and fix you because here's what's going to happen when I was studying this the one thing that God spoke to me on was The devil will accuse me of a bunch of stuff, but if I let the word of God convict me first, that's just gonna bounce right off of me. In other words, if I'm humble about my real self, any accusation from the enemy is gonna be pointless. In other words, like Charles Spurgeon said, yeah, you're right, I am unworthy, but God loves me anyway. See, the word of God takes those twisted accusations of the enemy and throws the truth right back at him. And so if I let the word of God rebuke and correct and change the the course of my life first, I'm going to be ahead of Satan's accusations. He's going to be a little behind because God already told me what I need to hear and everything else is a lie from the devil. See, I already got the download of the truth, Satan. I already got my download for today, and tonight I'm going to get some more. And the reality is, is you're telling me a lie because I already studied the truth. Church, we must be in the Bible. It's mentioned two times, really, in here because truth is from the Word of God, and Jesus is truth. So we have all of this for us. And this is, has to do with being under the blood, under the authority, and under the armor of God. All of that. But how do we put it on? I think that word put on can be a little confusing after I was studying Greek and other cross references and all those things. As believers, We have Jesus Christ. We have him on us. We have him in us. What I believe Paul is trying to say is is walk in your identity of a follower and a child of God. Today, choose to serve and follow me. By the way, the armor is representing 
the presence, the light of Jesus. If we go to Romans, that's our scripture for this. Romans chapter 13. Because there is a contrast. We can put on other stuff or we can put on Jesus. Romans 13, verse 11. This is an urgent message from Paul to the church. He says, this is all the more urgent for you you know how late it is. Time is running out. Wake up for our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So listen to this. Look what it says. Remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes and put on the shining armor of right living. Because we belong to the day, we must live decent lives for all to see. Don't participate in the darkness. So notice the battle between light and darkness. Don't participate in the darkness of wild parties and drunkenness or in sexual promiscuity and immoral living or in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. So what is Paul trying to say? If you have Jesus in you, he is your identity. He is who you are from the inside out, if you are a believer. He's saying to walk in the truth, the righteousness, the peace, the faith, the salvation, and the word of God. And I kind of look at it this way, if I could visually look at this, that when I first get saved, my armor is kind of rookie armor. <laughs> it's, it's the scraps, maybe, you know, that it's the new guy's armor. But every day that I mature in Christ, I get more layers to my armor. Amen. Because here's, I'm going to go to Ephesians 4 just to show you what I mean. Because when I looked up the cross references and the Greek meanings of all these words, put on and take up the armor and all those things, it leads you to Ephesians 4, verse 15. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. If you go to Ephesians 1, verse 22, God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church and the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. We mature as we mature in Christ, as we become more like Christ. Every day that we choose to follow Jesus, we are just adding stronger pieces of armor to our armor. In other words, you're learning more about what? You're learning more about truth. You're growing in the truth of God. You're growing in the righteousness, the peace, the faith, the salvation, and lastly, the word of God. It makes you stronger when you mature in those things. Why is that important? Why is, why is it important that we understand that it's not like it's, it's about living in Christ and living clothed in Christ? Well, Paul says to to put off the old nature and put on the new, but we should never take that off. Right? Like, I'm not going to go, I'm not, like, tonight, after I'm, after, actually, just go today, after I'm done preaching, do you think I'm going to take off Jesus and go live the way the world wants me to live? But unfortunately, Christians are doing that. Unfortunately, Christians are doing that. We're arrogant enough to think, that we can believe in Jesus Christ. And by the way, who else was arrogant and prideful? Satan. The fact that Satan could think he could tempt Jesus Christ and win is arrogance and pride. Church, this is a little hard, what I'm saying. But Paul never said, take off your armor. To put on is to mature and be more like Christ every day. It was a progressive maturity in Jesus Christ. That's the only thing I can find in scripture is there was an ongoing be more like Christ. And that's actually God's plan for us is not to get weaker, but to get stronger in Jesus. And the enemy doesn't want you to do that because you're dangerous when you mature. You're dangerous when you study your word. You're dangerous when you understand righteousness and peace and salvation and the word of God 
the sword of the spirit, all the armor, when you understand your position in this world, when you understand that you stand under the blood, under the armor, under the authority of God, you are dangerous. Do we really? I mean, come on, think about that. Do you think Satan wants us to do that? Do you think he wants us to understand our identity in Christ more? Do you think he wants us to stand firm in Jesus? Do you think that he wants us to take off our armor? Yeah, we're not going to, though. I have decided to follow Jesus. There's no turning back. Amen. Mm. So we're not taking off armor because that would be like taking off Jesus and he's the best thing that's ever happened to this world. But if, if the enemy can get us rattled and shaken about the truth of the word of God and all these pieces of armor and he can convince you that you'll be all right, don't cover your chest today. You don't, hey, don't worry about your breastplate. Go ahead and sin this week. Go ahead. Don't be, don't be righteous. It's all good. He, he'll, he'll forgive you. Right? Hey, don't, don't worry about the truth. It's not all true. There's actually a lot of problems in the Bible. Don't worry about it. You see what I'm saying? This is what the enemy's doing. But we don't, we don't, no. Nah. No, no, no. No, we stand our ground. We stand firm. I was in, a, in my office yesterday meeting with someone who was getting, she thought, beat up in the battle. And I, I would agree. But the reason why is because she's succeeding. She's fighting for someone important in her life who doesn't want to believe in God at all. And so she's been under attack, and she was getting discouraged. And she, you know what, you know what, the, you know where the enemy slick. You know what the enemy was telling her that she's doing something wrong, so she's being punished by God. So I fixed that real quick. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And can I just give you a discipleship principle in that real quick? If I didn't know that, I would not have been able to help her church. Oh man, Satan's not going to like this. Here comes a fatal blow. When you are a studied disciple maker, you are capable of breaking down those lies and cutting down those lies with the word of God. And we must be studied up. Hey, I love, I love watching some football. It's, it's great. I love, I, I like some shows, things like that, but nothing takes the place of my time with God. Nothing. Amen. I went freestyle a little bit. It's all good. I prefer that. I don't have time to, to, to wrap up the rest, and I'm going to use it next week because humility is a weapon. I should have just saved it. But listen, I want to, I want to close with this. We can come from out under the protection of God if we get prideful. Wow. And there's scriptures for you to study it, and you can get a head start this week. But listen, we are under the blood. And then we are under the authority and the armor of God. But here's the, here's the reality. God does not infringe, infringe upon our free will. If we choose to be rebellious, and not live in righteousness and peace and salvation, all this. If we choose to do that, we leave ourselves powerless and vulnerable to an attack of the enemy. And typically, pride comes before the fall. So one more truth for you before you go today. The devil doesn't want me to say this either. I don't care. Do not think that you can do this fight alone. First of all, you're not alone. The Bible says, Jesus said, if they would make disciples, that I would be with you to the very end of the age. 
that he is with us, that God is for us, who can be against us. But the moment that we think we can go through the day without praying, without depending on God, without depending on the truth of his word, the moment we do that, Satan's like, all right, now I got my way in. I got my way in. I'm going to mess him up. That's why every day I hang out with God. Because I'm trying to mature that armor and make it stronger. I'm not taking one piece off. And if I notice that I'm starting to compromise, then it's time to get to my knees and pray. Because here's the thing. God gave us all that armor, and then Paul went and said, oh, yeah, pray. (laughs) Because the armors, the armor... And prayer work hand in hand. It's a weapon. Cool. Praise God. Praise God. I'm praying you're equipped more and more today. This is the word of God. This is the truth. Hang out in it. Let it work on you. You are leaving here with power. You're under the authority of Christ. You're under the authority of God's word and his armor and the blood. Walk in it today. Satan cannot prevail. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. Let's stand together and we'll pray. Let's go ahead and stand together. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for what you did for us on the cross, making righteousness available to all those who believe. So we believe in you today. God, we submit ourselves to be under your authority and your word and your armor. These gifts that you've given us graciously, we should not ignore. God, we use the word of God, your word, your truth, to fight this week. And when we feel attacked, it's actually because we're doing something right. So Lord, I pray you would encourage us and be with us as we go our separate ways. And we depend on you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I just realized I didn't tell you the rest of that story of that person in my office. I said, I said, you're doing something right, so the enemy is coming against you, and what you are doing is working. So stand firm. Stand firm. So church, stand firm today. God bless you. Have a blessed Sunday.